Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I know I haven't been posting a lot of videos lately. That's because I've been super, super busy with work. But here I am with another video. So this video is going to be about me sharing an experience about mailing documents from the United States all the way to India through USPS. So about a month ago, I decided to mail these documents. And since I was in no rush to get them over to India, I shopped around. I looked at FedEx, what FedEx was going to quote me, what UPS was going to quote me, and finally settled in on USPS because they were charging me almost 50% of what FedEx and UPS were quoting me. So USPS was going to charge me about $35, $36 flat rate for a flat rate envelope from Minneapolis all the way to Bangalore in India. So USPS ships it from here all the way to India. Once it reaches India and exits the airport, it's India Post who takes over. So they're equivalent of USPS in India. And that's where the service kind of gets crappy. So let's take a look at the journey of my envelope from Minneapolis all the way to Bangalore. So guys, let's quickly take a look at the tracking on USPS's website. So I shipped it out on the 22nd of January and you can see that it started moving through the system. It reached Chicago on the 24th and it departed Chicago through air on the 25th. Not bad, only took about three days. Passed through Ethiopia and reached to New Delhi on the 27th of January. That's not bad for international shipping. But if you look at India Post's website and you can actually use the same tracking ID from USPS on India Post's website and it will work. I believe they have some sort of a code share agreement between them. You can see that on the 22nd, the item was booked, yep. And it started moving and it departed the United States from Chicago on the 25th. Looks, looks perfectly good. And the next office, as it says, is the Delhi Foreign Post Office. That's fine. But if you look at USPS's website, you can see that on 27th of January, it reached, it departed Delhi, India. It means that it exited the airport where it arrived in India. That tracking is not available on India Post website. So that completely seems to have skipped out. And then the next entry is on the 12th of February, where it says customs clearance on USPS's website. And the next entry on India Post website is also on the 12th of February. Pay attention that it's they switch. Uh, the date format in India is the day first and then the month and the year as opposed to um, the month coming first here and the day and the year. So don't be confused by that. It, it appears that it arrived on the 20. It appears that it arrived on 27th of January to exit at the airport. But between 27th of January and 12th of February, there's absolutely no tracking on USPS's website or India Post website. Here's what happens once it sort of exits the airport. Now, India Post has taken over and it's entirely them that it's been transferred out to. So that part from USPS, I'm really happy that they were able to tell me that it was it exited out of uh, Delhi airport. But India Post doesn't seem to have accepted it into their system till the 12th of February. What it did between the 27th of January all the way to 12th of February, which is almost two and a half weeks. I have absolutely no clue. And this is where the crappy service kicks in. So, and all this while, my parents, my wife, they kept pestering me about the status of the document. And I was like, <laughs> when my wife called in to check to see where the, the envelope was, they claimed that it le although it left the United States, but it, they never, it never arrived in India. They claimed that it's still in the United States. So that's, that kind of sucked for me because I knew from USPS's website that it had indeed reached India and in fact exited out of the airport. So that kind of sucked and kind of made me feel like... Jut bolo, bar bar jut bolo. जो भी बोल सकते हैं सब झूठ बोलो जहां भी बोल सकते हैं झूठ बोलो and then once it finally showed up in their system it started moving along it, then it 
moved to the 16th. It says it dispatched to Bangalore sub for foreign post office. But if you look at USPS's website, it says custom clearance on the 12th and then process through a facility. And then it jumps directly to the February 20th entry, where it says custom clearance again, which is in Bangalore. Now here, the question arises whether it passed through customs twice. If it did, why did it pass through customs twice, once in Delhi, once in Bangalore? That absolutely makes no sense to me. But um, this entry from 16th does not show up on USPS's website. Then the 20th entry does show up. It says custom received it. And then once they received it, they forwarded it to the next office, which forwarded it to the post office, which is close to my home. Eventually, once it arrived at the post office, we had it by the end of the day, just for a flat rate envelope to travel from United States all the way to India. It took about a month's time which I think is sort of unacceptable because they ship a package, not an envelope, a package from United States all the way to my home in Bangalore in three weeks. This time for an envelope, they seem to have taken their sweet time. Kind of makes me feel like the coach share or the uh, collaboration or um, whatever USPS has with India Post. The worst trade deal ever made by any country I think in the world. I think anyway, this was me sharing my experience of my envelope traveling all the way from Minneapolis to India. Took about a month for the price. If you have the time, sure, go ahead. They do offer tracking and their tracking number which USPS provides can be used to track your package on India Post website. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.